Kim Nichols and I live here in Fortuna. I am a Humboldt County native. I am from one of the oldest settling families in Humboldt County. So our family's been here since the 19th century. Ed was working in Tehama County and I said, hey, you need to be at this doctor's appointment with me. I think that this is kind of, you know, because we're imminent, right? It's we're 40 weeks, we're imminent, we come home. And so he came home and he did not have time to actually go to our house. He met me at the doctor's office. And when I got there, my blood pressure was off. That was not normal. And so she, <clears throat> she did a few other things and then she ultimately decided to send me over to the um, labor and delivery. There's fetal distress, the baby is turned, we can't do an induction, we need to, we need surgery now. And trots the anesthesiologist and I'm still trying to get undressed and, she, and the anesthesiologist was like, she's still got her clothes on. And the nurse was like, I'm sorry, we're trying and getting all of her clothes off and getting me on that table. And that was, that was pretty flat terrifying because there was surgery imminent, there was fetal distress. I didn't know what was going on. And I'm pretty sure that Dr. Sharashevsky had a pretty clear idea of what was going on. But I had to develop sudden preeclampsia, sudden onset preeclampsia. I was in danger of seizing. They started a mag sulfate drip, which is your first line defense drug against um, preeclampsia seizures. Everything happened so fast. There was not time to sit there and look for another IV site. There was not time to have all of these things sorted out before I ever got to the operating room. There was, all right, this needs to happen now, let's go. She ended up having to make a special kind of incision just to get the baby out of my uterus. And then when we did open it up and get him out, a couple of different things happened. One is I had an excess of amniotic fluid. That can be dangerous for a couple of different reasons. Amniotic embolism is one of them. And then um, the baby was a quadruple nuchal, which means that he had his umbilical cord wrapped around his neck four times. Four times, yes. And he also had a true overhand knot in his cord. And that knot was tightened down. If he had managed to pull it any tighter, he would not be here. So he would have suffocated because there wouldn't have been oxygen or blood coming from the placenta. He would have strangled himself, right? So the other thing is he had turned breech, but that was fortunate because if they had tried a trial of labor, if, if everybody hadn't kind of lined up the way they had, he would not have survived vaginal birth with that quadruple nuchal and that overhand knot. If we hadn't had her, we wouldn't be around to tell this story, my baby or me, so. That was a really scary thing. Anyway. And I have dealt with some scary things. But that was a scary thing. I know that Dr. Jennifer Anderson has said that lives have been saved by having Ribbon OB open. I know that the midwives have the same sort of, we need to be here. We are not here simply as a convenience. We are here as a necessity. And I know that if I had had to wait half an hour, that cord knot could have been tight and I could have had a stillborn baby, right? Or I could have gone into uh, preeclamptic seizures. I could have had a placental abruption. I could have bled to death. My baby could have died then too. So not having these things right available is dangerous. It's dangerous to the community. And you might say that, oh, well, there's an ER local locally available and there is but there's no one in the ER who is specifically trained in obstetrical emergencies if they let it go and people die and there's a lawsuit will providence even care because it's such a large company okay, this is a profit before people situation and i don't understand why people have to die we should be better than that <laughs>